pleasure, our duty to pray for you. Uh, we're so grateful that we have an opportunity to pray for you. Uh, I think that's all I'm supposed to say and do. Um, I ask guys for just a little bit of pastoral license and that you guys will bear with me. For some reason, God has placed on my heart. Now, he's a great God. He can do whatever he wants to do. Um, I, I, he doesn't work for me. I, I work for him. And, and so because of that, he has asked us to uh, partake in the Lord's Supper. I know traditionally we do the Lord's Supper on the first Sunday uh, of the month. But God has kind of placed it on my heart that we can continue doing the Lord's Supper. And so if you do not have a communion cup, would you raise your hand so that we can take care of you? Uh, please raise your hand if you do not have a communion cup. It looks like we all have communion cups. So with that, uh, uh, just a moment. Yeah, we will arrive in just a moment. Thank you. Okay, maybe some things that he is placing on your heart to deal with. And so uh, kind of at this point, as the music is playing softly, even if you need to come down to this altar by yourself and God has revealed some things that he is uh, working out of your life or some things that he is working into your life, some alt, some bitterness that he needs to get out so he can use you the way he desires to use you. Come on down to this altar. I, I'm going to read the scripture. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Sing it, Winnie. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. As we stand this morning, understand that this represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He came down and took on the body of a human. And he walked this earth so that we could be heirs to heaven. He allowed his body to be broken that ours wouldn't have to be. Father, thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much. That you came down, you walked this earth, you suffered for us, Lord. You allowed your body to be beaten and broken, but you did not fall. And you did all this, Lord, because you loved us. As we partake this morning, Lord God, let us remember your suffering for us that we might inherit heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Likewise, the Bible said without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Pastor, would you pray for the blood? Eternal God, our Father, we thank you so much for shedding your blood. As Pastor Davis just said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. God, you loved us so much that you shed your blood in seven different places for our complete deliverance. As the songwriter said in the past, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood yes, shed yes, for yes. me. And God, you did it even if it was just for me. But your blood is so powerful that it can save Old Testament saints. It can save New Testament saints. It can reach in the past and blot out sins. It can reach in the future and blot out sins. God, we're so grateful for your blood. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name. This is the blood of Jesus. Take ye of it. They finished. They sang a sim as they went out. There's power, power, wonder work and power in the blood of the Lamb. You may be seated. How many are happy to know that he knows your name? Amen. That there's nothing that happens that he doesn't know about. Yes. There's nothing that goes on with you that he doesn't see. He knows where you are and how you are. Amen. Hey, Shay. to know the Lord knows your name, where you are, and what you're going through. Amen? Amen. Because of that, he deserves your sacrifice of praise and worship.
and he knows all about you. You know my name. I'm so glad to know God. You know my name. And know how you walk with me. You know how you walk with me. And know how you talk with me. And know how you talk with me. And know how you tell me. And know how you tell me. That I am your friend. No, no mountain can stop me, cause you hold my hand. I'm walking in your victory, cause your power is within me. No giant, no giant can defeat me, cause you hold my Thank you for what you're about to do and how you're about to do it. We love you so much. We need you. But God, I come before you as your puny pulpiteer. Hide me behind your cross. Don't let these people see me, God. They, they don't need to see me. They need to see you. Oh, God. God, you already know I'm weak, wounded, and weary. But God, with your power, I can do all. Is there anything too hard for God? Uh, there is nothing too hard for you, God. Uh, there is no puzzle you can't solve. There is no uh, question you can't answer. There is no maze that you can't navigate. There is nothing too hard for you, oh God. We need you now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, God, we come before you asking that you would anoint the reading, the preaching, and the hearing of your word. Let your word go forth in clarity. God, we pray that you would take out the, uh, the wax in our ears. We take, pray that you would take off the blinders of our eyes so that we can hear and see clearly what it is you're saying to us. Use us, Lord. Oh, God. As I often say, God, speak, Lord. 
for your servant here. God, I thank you. Thank you. We, we can't do this without you. Holy Spirit, you already in the place. <laughs> uh, we say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome to take over the service as you have already done. You have the right to wreck the place if you want to. Do as only you can do. But God, when we know in the person of the Holy Spirit, when you begin to wreck things and rearrange things and you begin to run things out that you're doing it because you love us so much and that we're going to be better than when we first arrived. And that's what we want. Lord, we love you. And we thank you. Thank you. Loose me now and let me go. Uh, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my rock and my redeemer. In the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. I, I want to uh, ask uh, for your forgiveness. Please forgive me. Uh, I may not be on my A game today, uh, but y'all bear, bear with me and pray for me. So we can try to glorify our great king. Uh, Pastor Davis, on uh, several weeks ago, I noticed a sour smell in my garage. Uh, and my assessment led me to believe that something had crawled in my garage and died. But I was not able to locate the position of that smell. What started to happen because that smell was in my garage and coupled with the Texas heat, uh, the smell began to intensify. So when you would go into the garage, that smell would be waiting on you like a fine feathered friend. Hey, remember me? But what happened with the smell is that it did not stay in one location. Yeah. What the smell then began to do is it began to permeate not only in the garage, but it entered into the house without my permission. Yeah. Yeah. O on this Tuesday, JP, uh, my baby boy, one Joel Franklin Jones, he walked into the garage after I had picked him up from football practice, and he said, Daddy, I think I need to follow the flies. And when he began to follow the flies, I saw something and it indicated to me where the smell was. Ah, when he said, Daddy, I'm going to follow the flies, I looked at the refrigerator that I keep in the garage and I noticed something about it. The refrigerator that I keep in the garage where we keep extra meat, Brother Bo, it was turned off. In other words, there was no power going through it so it could preserve the meat. <sighs> you you going to play with me like that? See, let me put my glasses on so I can see your face. See, you, you blurry right now, but when I put these glasses, I'm going to see you. Oh, there you are. Yeah, see, see. Oh. Can I go ahead? I'm only in the first part of my prologue. Can I step out of my prologue and onto your log? See, you can't do the work that God is calling you to do if there is no power of the Holy Spirit operating in your life. Can I help you today? If there is no power of the Holy Spirit operating in your life, only thing you're going to be producing is spoil. Oh, oh, bless his name. I'm going to try to get through this thing without crying because he's on me right now. Uh, 
See, see, here's what happened, Brother Caddy. Here's what happened. Uh, uh, several weeks ago, there was a storm in the area and the power got knocked off. And the circuit that that refrigerator was on, it was cut off and I didn't even know it. And as a result of the power being cut off, the meat began to spoil. I could see and smell the results of that refrigerator having no power. Ooh, who am I talking to today? You are operating under your own accord, but when people are looking at your life, they're seeing that there's no power. And they see and smell the sour meat in your life. Ah, but I could not help to, but to make an ecclesiastical application here. See, when the power of the Holy Spirit is operating in your life, what you should be producing is not a pungent smell or a putrid smell. You should be producing a piquant smell, P-I-Q-U-A-N-T. That's a new word. I just learned that one. Isn't that a good word? Yeah, yeah. And what that means, that means there should be a sweet smell that is coming from you. Did you hear what I just said? A piquant smell should be coming from you because the power of the Holy Spirit is operating in your life and what you produce, not a sour smell, but a sweet smell. Chanel, number five, if you will. Now, but we wore obsession cologne. That's what I wore back in the day. What, what do y'all wear today, you young fellas? What y'all put on today? Y'all fellas in cologne. Nothing, don't put on cologne. Oh, yeah, 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 I got to find uh, what, the, what they were today. Okay, here it is for, the, for my older brothers. Old Spice, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, get your swag on. You understand what I'm saying? <sighs> when the power of the Holy Spirit is operating in your life, not only do you uh, produce a piquant smell, you produce a pervasive smell. Oh, yeah. It, it, it goes wherever. Uh, it, it, it protrudes into all areas of life. Can I help you today? See, one of the reasons why the church isn't as powerful as it needs to be is because we think that here in the body of Christ, we who are salt of the earth, the light of the world, that we as salt, we need to stay in the salt shaker. That salt shaker does you no good unless you shake it up. And you shake it on areas that need to be salted. Oh, God. So when you are producing a smell, it's a piquant smell. It's a protruding smell. It's a pervasive smell. Uh, today, 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 in the text that we're about to traverse, <laughs> in this text that we're about to go through, as we are going through this gospel of Matthew, we're in the fifth installment in our sermon series called The Church, The Bride Built for Battle. And we're here looking at the gospel according to Matthew, and we're going to be taking a snippet out of the most famous sermon ever recorded, the sermon called The Sermon on the Mount preached by none other than our great God and King, Jesus Christ. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the prologue of his sermonic presentation, he starts out with the Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes are laced with oxymoronic coupling. Stay with me now. Yeah. And if you look at the Beatitudes, it said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled. That's oxymoronic. He says, blessed are those when you are persecuted. Ladies, if you want to check my notes, that was already in my notes. Yeah. Uh, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Uh, uh, the, 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 the prologue, it is laced with oxymoronic couplings. Uh, but then Jesus moves as he still in the second part of his prologue to the similitudes. That's where we're going to be today. 
in the similitude where he says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. <laughs> it's going to get good to me. See, here's what I understand. Here's what you got to understand here, Q. Uh, uh, when you look at the similitudes, when Jesus says, you are, he says it in the emphatic. And I know what you are already saying, Pastor Rod, don't nobody care. You done went to that old cemetery and you think you know something. But when you really get to look at what an emphatic is, it's said with emphasis. Yes. Yeah. Oh, let me see if I can say it this way, Papa. Pop, pop. Here it is, here it is, here it is. If you look at the theology according to Kevin Hart, that's what Jesus Christ is doing right here. He's saying it with his chest. You are the light of the world. Can't you hear me today? Jesus wants you to understand something today, baby. You are the light of the world. He's saying it with his chest. you got to understand, baby. You're not that lie. That's not who you are. You're not that lack. That's not who you are. You are not that lust, but you are the light of the world. Did you hear what I just said? He's saying it emphatic. See, okay, you, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. Okay, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. I was talking to my big boy. Uh, they play Southern, Southern Illinois on this coming Saturday. They, next Saturday, they play in Southern Illinois. And, and, and I said, big fella, uh, how does it make you feel uh, when I say, baddest dude on the field, baby, baddest dude on the field? He says, when I come out and I hear you say, baddest dude on the field, what that tells me, one, is that you are there. <laughs> See, you didn't get that. See, when God is telling you who you are, one thing he's telling you is that he is there with you. Whatever it is you are called to do, when he tells you who you are, he's telling you, I'm with you, baby. Did you hear what I just said? But then this is what he said. He says, uh, not only does it tell me that you are there, but it tells me who I am. I'm the baddest dude on the field. Right, right. And, and, and somebody about to get it. You hear what I'm saying? But when you say baddest dude on the field, not only does it tell me who you are, uh, not only does it tell me that you're there, but you're telling them yeah, yeah. who I am. I should have somebody standing up right about there. See, see what you need to know, the enemy has told you who you are and you've believed that lie. But what the enemy needs to hear is that God tells you who you are. And he's saying it emphatically. He's saying it with his chest. He's saying to you, you are the light of the world. Hey, you are the salt of the earth. You the baddest dude on the field, baby. And you go out and you show everybody, you show all the demonic hosts that you the baddest dude that God has put there because I am a child of God. Who in the house know what I'm talking about today? Who in the house can clap their hands, celebrate because our great God tells us who we are. Ah, uh, I'm enjoying my text already, y'all. I'm enjoying my text already. I ain't even got to my text, and I'm enjoying it already. Uh, so the first thing that I want to look at is what I call a pungent church. Uh, look what it says there in verse number 13. Can you give me verse number 13? Do you have it? Verse number 13. Look what it says there. Uh, you are the salt of the earth. Hmm. But I need you to understand something. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under men's foot. First thing that I see there is what I call the church uniqueness. Same verse, verse 13. Now, now, now I love what Jesus is doing here. Uh, he's using these two metaphors of salt and, and light to tell us who we are. Uh, the first thing that I need you to know is that because he says that you are the salt of the earth, that you are valuable. You're not leftovers. Chopped liver. Bottom of the barrel. You are valuable. Well, how do you get that? See, when you look at the historicity of salt in first century Palestine, what they would do, they would pay the Roman soldier 
with salt. Uh, they said it like this, he's worth his weight in salt. Oh my God. God, my God, you not getting this today. See, you got to understand something, baby. Uh, the members of the church of Jesus Christ, you are valuable not only to him, but you're valuable to those around you. And you got to know, baby, because you are valuable, he can use you. You are not someone who can't do anything because you have the spirit of God. Now, if you're not saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, you are not valuable. But when you are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, you are valuable. Did you hear me? But even if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, you're so valuable to him that he went to Calvary's cross to die for you. Oh, let me keep moving to this text. See, see one of the things you got to understand about the unique qualities uh, uh, of this church, of the church, you got to understand that we are two things. We are preserving agents, and we are purifying agents. Did you get that? Yeah. See, see what they would do. Uh, 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 they didn't have refrigeration like we do to preserve stuff. In order to preserve the meat, they would then take salt, and they would sprinkle it on the meat, and it would preserve the meat that they would have. They could then come back and eat it later because it had been saturated with salt. See, oh, I'm trying not to go ahead of myself here. See, you got to understand something, baby. I don't need you as salt sitting in the salt shaker. I need you to allow God to shake up your world and shake you in the world. Did you hear what I just said? So that God can use you to preserve some things. But not only is it a preserving agent, it is a purifying agent. Uh, uh, what salt would often do, it would take out all of the impurities of a thing. Oh, you better hear me today. See, we are spending too much time sitting in these four wilds, having a hallelujah good time, and we need to be going out into the world. Not be of the world, but be in the world, like Jesus said in John chapter 17 in his high priestly prayer. We need to be in the world, but not of the world, so that we can purify the world. I need you to hear me today, child of God what God is telling you. I need you to go, <coughs> excuse me, in the mountain of government. Oh, let me get me a drink. I need you to go in the mountain of education. I need you to go in the mountain of business. I need you to go to those mountains and purify. So now we're seeing in the mountain of arts and entertainment so some good stuff can be produced out there so our children won't be messed up with this tick tocking and talking and ticking. I need you to get in these areas and produce and purify the area. Did you hear what I just said? Oh, that is our uniqueness. Uh -huh. uh, but let me go ahead and give an ecclesiastical rebuke. I have to rebuke here. I wouldn't be pastoral if I didn't. Quit looking at the world and saying the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And you know why the world is going to hell in a handbasket? Because you're still in the salt shaker. See, you know what? I know what you're saying, but, but pastors, it's comfortable in this salt shaker. Because I'm surrounded by other granules of salt. They think like I think, so I'm around people of like mind. But Jesus is trying to tell you that, that that person over there who don't look like you, who don't act like you, who don't sound like you, I love them too. And I need you to go over there and be some salt. Did you hear what I just said? I need you to go over there so I can do a work in their life. They need to taste the pungency of the goodness of God, the pungency of the greatness of God, the pungency of the graciousness of God. Oh, do you hear me, child of God? There are people out there dying and going to hell because they think what they did, God will never forgive them for. They are thinking, they are believing that lie, they are living that lie, and they are loving that lie. And you need to be salt and get into that 
person's life and tell them, yeah, baby, you know, I know God is good. Look at me because what you do it, I used to do it all times 10. Did you hear what I just said? And look what God has done in my life. Now, I ain't what I ought to be. That, that, that was a time of right, right, right. I ain't what I ought to be. Yeah. But I so sure thank God. Anybody in the house today can celebrate with me and say, thank God I ain't what I used to be. Hey. But guess what? Guess what? And I need you to hear this today, baby. And you ain't what you're going to be. Because God is still doing the work in your life. So you see the church uniqueness. Uh, but look what I call the church's uselessness. Huh. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It's good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under man's feet. Yeah. What, what is Jesus talking about there? What is he talking about? Once again, if you look at the historicity of salt and how it was used back in that day, what they would do, they would take salt, they would then mix it with an element which we even have today called gypsum. I got any uh, gardeners out there, they know about this thing of gypsum. They would take it with gypsum and then they would make stones or they would use it to repair the roads. And they take that salt that was supposed to be used for better things, mix it with Jimson, and now it's out there in the road, and all it's being used for is to be trampled on or people to walk on. What is Jesus really trying to tell us here? He needs to, he's saying this to us. I need you to understand your ontological composition. Yeah, I, I didn't make you for that. Yeah. I didn't make you and create you in the Imago day just to be walked on. Yeah. Just to be trampled on. Just to be at the bottom of the barrel. No, I'm not talking about some prosperity gospel. I'm talking about metaphysics. I'm talking about why God and all of his greatness and sovereignty why he created you. He created you as the salt of the earth. You ought to be preserving and purifying everything. Oh, let me see if I, you didn't get that. You didn't get that. So see, one thing about salt is it, is it produces a pungent taste. Okay, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. Uh, uh, one of my favorite culinary masterpieces is collard greens and cornbread. Now, that was for those of you of the sophisticant. Yeah. But for us everyday folk, collard greens, cornbread. Yeah, you don't say cornbread, you say cornbread. Yeah, it's collard greens and, and, and cornbread. Yeah, yeah. See, but what makes collard greens so appeasing and appetizing is that you take uh, uh, some elements, some fat back. Yeah. Some hog mold. Yeah. Now, for those of you who got high blood pressure, you, you might use a turkey neck or a turkey wing. Right, right, right. But one thing you know uh, about that fat back, that hog mark, those turkey necks or turkey wings, that it is comprised of what? Salt. And the salt that's in the fat back and the hog mugs, turkey necks and turkey wings, when it's turned up and let the, uh, to simmer, the salt that was in the fat back and hog marks, it then begins to permeate the greens. Ooh. See, can I help you before I finish this illustration? See, you have not been created to be mixed with the world. Uh, uh, God has created you to mix you into the world. Yeah, yeah. See, you don't uh, need to be having other things put inside of you. Uh, you need to be put into other things. So the salt that's inside of you will come out and it mixes and it gives everything the flavor that you, oh, you better hear me. So, because when you ever had some greens, anybody ever had some greens and, and, and they some uh, uh, show enough good greens? Yeah, show enough. Yeah, that, that means those are some grains. Yeah, now, now you've had some greens that have been good. 
surely enough. Yeah. But then you've had some grains that's been shown up. Oh, okay, here it is. Let me use a, a, a modern-day colloquialism. Uh, 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 have you ever had some, some, some greens, and you eat them, and you say, and they ask, uh, are these greens good? For sure. Yeah. You don't say, for sure. No. That's lowering the taste of the greens. What you say is what? For sure. Right. Because those are some shown up good greens, some for show sure good greens, because the salt in that fat back, yeah, the salt in those, oh, I'm trying to help you today, baby. See, you are not useless, child of God. What you have been created for is to do a work for God, and the salt inside of you has to come out so you can permeate the world. You've got to understand something, baby. I need you to understand who you are. You are not meant to be trampled on. Who do, are you? Let me tell you who, are, who you are. The Bible says, what does the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, 13? Give me that scripture. And the Lord will make you the head. You really going to play with me? I don't have no Bible readers out there. I, I need some Bible readers. Did you see that scripture there? The Lord, this is who you are. He will make you the head and not the tail. You should be above only and not beneath. Oh, if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I have commanded you today, and are careful to observe them. Now, the caveat, you've got to do what God is telling you to do. But that's who you are. What does the Bible say? The Bible says in Romans 8, 37. Give me that scripture if you can. Look what the Bible says in Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things, we are beat up, has-beens, never was, never will be. No, that's not what the Bible says. What the Bible says in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You've got to hear me, child of God. You are more than Nikoni. You are more than some Jordans and some Nikes. You are able to conquer through him who loves you. That is who you are. You are not meant to be walked on, trampled on. What you are meant to do is the one to permeate society and change society from the inside out because you are more than conquerors. I'm not done yet. What does the Bible say? The Bible says in 1 Peter, give me that scripture in 1 Peter. Here it is too. But you are a chosen generation. Hey, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. That's who you are, child of God. You are not meant to be walked on if you are a blood-bought, blood-washed, child of the living king. You are not to be mixed with the world and thrown out to be trampled on, but you are the head and not the tail. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Ah, let me move on here. Uh, let me give you this last point so we can get out of here. But not only, not only uh, 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 do we see a... Uh, Permian church, but look what I call it, a projecting church. Look what it says there in verse number 14. Look what it says there in verse 14. Give me verse 10. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Yeah. The first thing I see there is what I call the illumination. Uh, look what it says there in verse 13. Give me verse 15. Who says that in verse 15? Nor do, they, the, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light unto all who are in the house. Uh, first thing that I see there, uh, go back to verse 14 for me. Uh, first thing I see there, it says, you are the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Huh. Once again, uh, uh, once again, Jesus used that emphatic, you are. He's, in, he's standing with his chest. This is who you are. 
You are the light of the world. See, the reason why Jesus has to say this emphatically, because you have really emphatically took on that lie. And the only way you can deal with that lie is by taking on the truth. The truth is that you are the light of the world. If you have believed in Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. And then the first thing I see there is what, what I call a continual shine. Yeah, it's continual shine. He says, you are the light. When you do an investigation of the text, what you see there when it says you are the light of the world, uh, in both 13 and 14, what Matthew has done, he is using a present active imperative. What, it, what that tells us in the present active, it is a continual action. Yeah. In other words, if the sun is shining, you let your light shine. If the storms are raging, you let your light shine. If you got a cupboard full of food, you let your light shine. If you got gas in your car, you let your light shine. If your, cat, your car is on empty, you let your light shine. No matter what comes your way, baby, you let your light shine. When times are good, you let that light shine. When times are bad, you let that light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Yeah. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, my God, my God. See, when you understand who you are, the enemy can't throw shade on your shine. Did you hear what I just said? Because you're going to let your light shine. Ah, but not only do we see a continual shine, but look at what I call a city shine. He says, a city on a hill ah, cannot be hidden. Ooh, I like this. Ah. Uh, here's what he says. Here's what he's saying, Papa. See, when I used to drive from Carthage, Texas, when I played JP, I played at Panola Junior College. You know, I used to give Angelina fits. Ooh, I gave him fits. TJ, ooh, I gave him fits. Gave him 30. Yeah, not 30, 30. Yeah. But when I would drive home and go back to Dallas, right, uh, there would be a point between Terrell, Texas, and Dallas, Texas, that I could see the Dallas skyline. I could see that ball, and it would be lit up. Yeah. I could see the green building. Anybody from, from the Metroplex know what I'm talking about? I could see that green building, and, and it would be lit up. I could even remember seeing the Pegasus, that red uh, uh, Pegasus. I could see all of that. I could see, and what that told me, hey, that I could see that I was almost home. Yeah. I, I was almost about to enter into Oak Cliff. That's my hood. Yeah, I was almost there because I could see the city that, oh, you better hear me today, child of God. What he is telling you that when I put you in a place, people need to be able to see that the goodness of God is real, that the greatness of God is real, that the graciousness of God is real, and they can see that when I'm around you, I feel like I'm at home. Oh, you need to hear me, child of God. You get your shine on because people are lost, wandering every which way. They don't know which way they're going, and they need to be able to see your life, and they see you are a city that's set on a hill. Oh, I like this, I like this. Look what it says there in verse 14. So we saw, uh, uh, we saw their continuous shine, a city shine. But look what I call the candlestick shine. Look what it says in verse number 15. I, I like this, I like this. Uh, look what it says there, verse 15. Nor do they put a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. Ah, and it gives light to all who are in the room. Can I teach the text? Yeah. Will you allow me to teach the text? Okay, let me teach the text. Okay. See, what Jesus is talking about there, when you look at the text in context, uh, he's not talking about a bushel. That's used for a uh, measuring out grain. But what he is talking about, when you understand the historicity of uh, uh, first century Palestine's architecture, when they would build a room, yeah, what they would do, they would build four walls on a house. And oftentimes, it would be a one-room house. 
And on certain parts of the wall, there would be this protrusion that would be protruding inside. And what that protruding or that fixture was for was to put the lamp on. Yeah. Yeah. And so they would have this protrusion and they would put the lamp on the, that lamp stand. Then they would light the lamp and then the whole room would be illuminated. See, here's what I need you to get today. See, what Jesus is dealing with, he says, now, you're not salt that's going to be trampled on. You've got to understand your position, baby. I have placed you in a place to cast your shine. Get your shine on. And you've got to understand who you are so that you can shine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I put you in the White House, get your shine on. If I put you in the courthouse, get your shine on. If I put you in the storehouse, get your shine on. If I put you in the outhouse, get your shine on. Wherever I place you, baby, you need to let that light inside of you shine. But the reason why we're not letting this light shine is because we still don't understand who we are. What is our ontological composition? Who are we? Oh, mama, the Bible says. <laughs> uh, give me Isaiah 41 and 8. Uh -huh. But you are, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham. Shay, there it is, Shay. What is it? Did I call y'all Shay? Did I call y'all Winnie and tell you what song to sing? What are you that God is mindful of you? He calls you friend. <laughs> you can call him father, but you can also call him friend. And you know why you can call him friend? Because he calls you. Yeah, they may be unfriending you on Facebook, but when God writes your name in the Lamb's book, he'll never unfriend you. Did you hear what I just said? What does the Bible say? The Bible says in Isaiah uh, chapter 44, verse 21, look what the Bible says. The Bible says, remember this, O Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. What did I do? I have on you. You are my servant, O Israel. Ooh, you will not be forgotten by me. <laughs> it's getting good, Papa. You know what's getting good? See, because I got somebody out there who think God has forgotten about and they thought they showed up here today under their own reconnaissance. No, they thought they just got up and came to church because that's what they want to do. But what they don't understand is that God was nudging them all throughout the night. Go down to that Bible. I got to tell you something. I need you to hear the pontificate, the pontificate. Yeah, see, you think I forgot you. Oh, but I need you to know something, baby. I ain't talking to you yet. I'm going to talk to you in just a minute. I'm talking to my papa. Papa, let me tell you, they think that God has forgotten them. But he put it on my heart to tell them in Isaiah 44 that he is not. Oh, who am I talking to today? You need to know, baby, that God has not forgotten you. Oh, preach, Pastor Rod. <laughs> what does the Bible say? Let me tell you how he doesn't forget you. What the Bible say? The Bible says in Isaiah 49. What does it say in 49, 16? Let me tell you how I haven't forgot you. You know how I know I haven't forgot you? Because I have inscribed you on the palm of my hand. Your walls are continually before me. <laughs> you know why God has not forgotten you? Okay. You, you remember how it was when you was in elementary school and you get you a girlfriend 
and you write her name in your hand. That's what God has done <laughs> because he loves you, baby. He never, because every time you see their name written in hand, you start thinking about them. And that's what God, when he looks at your name, he says, uh, your walls. He knows that when you do an investigation of that text, he knows the ruin that you have gone through. He knows where you are broken down, beaten up, and battered. And he says, that's always on my mind, baby. When I see your name written in my hands, I can't help but to think all of the stuff that you've gone through. I've not forgotten you, baby. I need you to wait because I'm going to restore some things in your life. I'm going to fix some things up. I haven't forgotten you, baby. When I see your name written, I wrote your name in my hand so every time I see it I start thinking about everything that you've gone through every time you've been abused abandoned and left alone I ain't forgot that baby because when I see your name written in my head I'm talking to somebody today baby God is trying to tell you he has not forgotten you oh bless his holy name oh bless his name he's telling you I ain't forgot you I know what it is that you're going through oh continue to shine. Let me, let me move on to this text. Not only do you see the elimination, look what I call the glorification. Here it is. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. First thing, your works need to be visible. You hear me? People should be able to see don't talk about it. Be about it. Oh, I love Jesus. I love this me some Jesus. They should see your good works. Uh, uh, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works. You're valuable. They're going to be valuable. That means when you go to work, you should be on time, on point, and on the J-O-B. Do you know the way we work because we acting lazy, nobody wants to hear what we are trying to say? You can ask this young man. First time I met him, he said he, he believes he's called into the ministry. And I, here's what my advice was to him, Brother Mike. I didn't tell him to go study and give me all of the charisma of Christ. I didn't tell him to go through and tell me the Matthean Jesus and its Christological titles. You know what I told him to do? I said, hey, man, I need you to ball out. Ball out. Get out there and ball. Because when you ball, that gives an opportunity for you to share the gospel, to see those good deeds, those sweet deeds, those pleasant deeds, those beautiful deeds. Deeds, yeah, that, that, that's what, and you bought only, only the sixth man of the year in the whack. That's what I'm saying, though. You better hear what I'm trying to say, right? When he balled down that and gives him an opportunity to tell everybody, why, man, JP, why were you able to do that, man? Because you're my, my great God that I serve. They should see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Not only should it be visual, valuable, but it should be verbal. They should be glorifying your Father in heaven. Let me do, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Let me wrap it up. Remember I told you the story about my big boy when I would yell out, baddest dude on the field, baby. Baddest dude on the field. And, and, and then here's what my big boy told me. He said, Daddy, you so loud that my coaches like it, my teammates like it, and the other team hates it. Yeah. Yeah. You so loud that people in the stands uh, uh, after the game, they come up to me, was that your dad? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he, he says, Daddy, uh, my coach is like it when you're there, and when you say it, uh, they get geeked up and hyped, and they ready to play. Because you done said, baddest dude on the field, baby. Baddest dude on the field. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. And then this is what happens. My big boy, I love the way he comes out, because I love the way the big fellas come out, Papa. You know, the, 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 the little bit of cute boys, the, the little fellas, you know, when they come out, you know, they all spry, kicking their legs and, and all that. Whoa! You know, all that old kind of stuff, you know. Little boys and all that. But I love the way the big boys come out, you know. Not much movement, but you know. All the big boys, they come out, they come out like this. Yeah. And did I get it? Is that right? Is that how they come out? They come out, right? 
right? The big boss, right? And, and, and when my big boy hears me, he just does this. And he gets focused on what he got to do. And then after the game, give him some dab, he goes in. And there's oftentimes somebody come up and says this. Hey, how you doing? Are you Nash's dad? Yeah. Hey, here it is, Bo. Here it is, Bo. Here it is. I love the way he plays. You did a good job with him. <laughs> Who bless his name? Oh, I'm done, Papa. Who bless his name? Hang on, ain't my fault. I need to be a part of the. Everybody picking on me today. I need to be a part of the kingdom, amen. Some of us, like Pastor said earlier, we've done so much in our lives. We think God don't love us no more. But He said, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Some of you, I see some of our college students are back today. That's great. We have what we call uh, watch care. Amen. See, senior moment. Almost 75 is coming right around the corner. And what that means is you don't leave your church home, but while you're here, we act like parents. We don't mess around. We don't play around. We see you messing up. We call you into account. We also feed you. You know, we take care of you. Amen. Someone may be feeling sorry today that I have messed up. And you may need to come down to the altar and receive prayer and laying on of the hand so that you might straighten up, as the old folks used to say, and lie right. Amen. These are your invitations this morning while the praise team shares. You may come if you desire. Amen. Don't give me the money. My heart is yours completely. My heart is yours solely. Looking for perfection. You're not looking for perfection. There's no need in me pretending. I'll give you everything. I'll give you everything. You deserve my full attention. You deserve my full attention. Nothing less than my devotion. Speak to me and I will listen. And Lord, I'll give you everything. I'll give you everything. Say, oh, 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 oh. you can have my heart. You can have my heart. Say, oh, oh. Say you can have my heart, yes you can, you can have my heart. Be the Lord of my emotions, be the Lord of my emotions. 
set me free from selfish motives. Search me till there's nothing hidden. And Lord, I'll give you everything. Say, I'll give you everything. Now say, oh, 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 oh. So you can have my heart. Yes, you can. You can have my heart. I belong to you. Say, oh, oh, oh. oh. You can have my heart. You can have my heart. Now say, oh, 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 oh. You can have my heart. Yes, you can. You can have my heart. I belong to you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. You can have my heart. You can have my heart. I belong to you. See, my heart is yours forever. Sing with me, say, my heart is yours forever. Yeah. See, my heart is yours forever. See, my heart is yours forever. My heart is yours forever. Yeah, and if you want my heart, you got it. You got it. Tell the Lord, you got it. If you want my plans, you got it. You got it. You got it. If you want my thoughts, you got it. You got it. You got it. If you want my desires, Lord, you got it. You got it. You got it. If you want my finances, you got it. You got it. You got it. If you want my commitment, Lord, you got it. You got it. If you want my heart, see if you want my heart, you got it. You got it, you got it. And if you want my dreams, you got it, you got it, you got it. If you want my plans, Lord, you got it. Yeah, oh. say you can have my heart. Say, oh, 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 you can have my heart. Yes, you can. You can have my heart. Now say, oh, 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 oh. You can have my heart. Tell the Lord, you can have my heart. I surrender today, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. You can have my heart. You can have my heart. Amen. Salt and light. Amen. Awesome, awesome message. You know, we have to be careful of these automations. These Lexus that you have in your house, they start talking back to you, running your life, locking your doors when you don't want them locked. Amen. Be careful now. Amen. <laughs> we have uh, some announcements. Nothing's up there. Connect. Okay. One of the things that we have developed over time is this new website. It allows you to see what's going on during the service. But more than that, we have multiple ways that you can give. We have the boxes inside and outside of the sanctuary. We also have the connect online where you can connect and give. And lately, we've also seen people like to cash apps. 
So you can also do cash apps as well and give. So there are multiple ways to give and support. We're on many platforms. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. Amen. Amen. Don't get caught up, though. But anyway, uh, Wednesday night, uh, make sure you register for the Wednesday night meal. We have a meal every Wednesday night. We're here at the well. We have an awesome youth program, an awesome children's program. Right now in the sanctuary, we're teaching the book of First Peter. It's very interactive. Come out and share with us. Uh, we have, if you've seen uh, our little area to my right, to your left, we have what we call the shine store. What that does is our children are developing themselves in terms of scripture and learning. And as a result of their learning, they receive rewards. So we're asking you to support so they can get shine bucks, so they can uh, be blessed for them learning about the Lord. Disciples in training. Amen. Donation needed for the shine store. Also, uh, what's very needful as well is you've seen the boxes, the shoe boxes out in the, uh, in, in, in the, in the uh, foyer. Those are very valuable. and We need money to ship them because they're going to individuals in different parts of the world and there are scriptures in there. There are blessings in there. When pastor said we're going to send our blessings to the uttermost parts of this earth, we believe in a church without walls. We believe in ministering outside of the walls. So please, they're just asking for uh, monies, $10 a box. I'm trying to read all that, Jamie. I don't read side language, Jamie. But my, my first lady got me covered. $10 a box to get that done. All right. Pack a shoebox. Amen. Why are everybody messing with me today? Do I look like I be messed with? Do I look scared today because my wife ain't in the house? She'll be back next week. Do that next week now. And she'll get y'all. Okay, we'll have a video this morning. Disciples in training, children's ministry, okay, waiting, video, audio, lights, action. You got the wrong person up there, you know better. Come to me. Don't forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Operation Christmas Child is a way for the little children to come to Almighty God. That is the best gift of all, is becoming part of God's family. The mission of Operation Christmas Child never changes Children are coming to Jesus. Children are being discipled. And children are taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. These children are brave and bold, not afraid, and they're not ashamed of the gospel. They're trained and equipped to go out and share their faith with others. And many times in areas where it's an unreached people group, the Bible tells us the time is now. Let them come, Jesus said, let them come. And they're coming. They're coming by the millions. Every single box represents the life of a young boy, a young girl who will be touched by the gospel. Jesus has come to give them light, that they do not need to be in the darkness, that they have hope that they have joy. And it is our prayer that this glorious light of the gospel will flow among the nations and will fill our land with the knowledge of the glory of God. The Lord God Almighty desires to fulfill his redemptive plan for mankind in and through each of us and all of us. All of us are children of God. We share this incredible opportunity to take the gospel truly to the ends of the earth by gathering children to Jesus. 
I believe this year for Operation Christmas Child, this may be the most important year, most important opportunity that we'll ever have to reach children in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that God will use these shoebox gifts to make a difference in the children's life for eternity. Isn't that awesome? And you can be a part of that. What we need is every one of those boxes to disappear. As we are getting donations for those, we are taking them down. So as long as you see them up there, it means we still need monies for the boxes. So please take time out. And uh, who's collecting? Ms. Donna. Where are you at, Ms. Donna? Stand up, Ms. Donna. Come on, don't be waving. But Ms. Donna is taking care of that. Amen. Now, there are a lot of things I can do better than pastor. I ain't going to tell you what they are. But nobody dismisses like pastor. So I'm going to make him come back and go to work. Amen. That's why I got my XP. There's a lot of stuff I need done that he does for me. Um, <clears throat> let, let me say something real quick about those uh, boxes. I saw on last week one of our babies what they earned in their shine bucks, they went to the store, bought something, and they put it in one of the boxes. I thought I was ready. <laughs> Do you hear what I just said? Our babies are taking the money that they've earned to, that they could get something for themselves. They took it. And they put stuff in the boxes that's going to minister to kids that are less fortunate to them. Amen. So please, please be a part of that. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Let me make sure. Uh, once again, uh, uh, prayer, pray, pray for me. Got a lot of stuff going on. So definitely need that. So keep continuing to pray uh, for us. Uh, uh, that. Anything else? What else do we have? Is that all the announcements that we have? College ministry. <clears throat> I, I got a couple slides up there for the college ministry. Uh, to our college kids. Uh, <clears throat> we have a, a life group for you guys. Let me say, all of my college uh, kids, my jacks, if you were out on the uh, yard uh, while we were passing out water and helping us pass out water, would you stand? Would you stand? All, of, all the jacks that were out there passing out water and all that. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, um, I told the group, um, I've been here eight years, and that's the first time We've been on that campus like that, to where Neck Bible was knocking it out the park. How many times have y'all been there and y'all saw every other church out there? But now we are there. They got to deal with us. Because we're the salt and the light. You understand what I'm saying? Also, uh, game night is going to be coming uh, for, our, uh, for our college kids. Uh, life group, 945, so y'all come be a part of that. Give me the game night slide, if, if you will. Uh, <clears throat> okay, we're going to have a game night. Uh, what's that date on there? September 9th. September 9th. Okay. Six o'clock. Six o'clock, September 9th. So come be a part of that. We're going to hang, hang out to our college kids, hang out, have some fun. But what we're also going to be doing to our college kids, now listen to me, there are going to be ways that you can get involved in ministry. You're not here just to be a consumer. You're also here to be a contributor. There are gifts, you, there's salt that's in you that this body of Christ needs. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so there are plenty of areas for you to serve in and work out what God has placed in you. Okay, I think, is that everything? I think that's everything. Once again, prayer warriors, we need you here to uh, be a part of uh, uh, our prayer warrior ministry. 9.30, uh, come in the sanctuary and pray. Pray for me, pray for our technology, pray for everything so that we see God do a great work. Continue to pray Psalms 91 over yourselves, a.m. or p.m. at 910. Uh, continue to pray that over ourselves. I told our college kids, because they went out and did that work, to be ready. The enemy, how many times, how many of y'all got, got attacked after that? Was, did it, oh, Lord, when we advance the kingdom, he's going to try to attack. So we got to continue to stay in prayer, okay? All right, also, uh, 111, for one minute, continue to pray, okay? God's doing some powerful stuff through this little old church, y'all. So continue to pray for us. We need to be a praying church. Uh, once again, you can go to uh, the App Store, 
and to get our Faith Life app. I need you to be a part of that, guy, so we can take care of you and love on you and all that kind of thing. Um, Kingdom Divided, uh, BSF Bible Study, see Sister Davis. We're going to start that in September, so please be a part of that. Uh, what else do we have? I think that's everything. So now, once again, for my uh, visitors today, if you are a visitor for the first time, would you please stand? Please stand. Visitors for the first time. Okay. I need you to gather up your things. If you brought them, would you go with them? If you brought these guys, uh, go with them. Gather your things up. Wave your hand, Sister Nene. Our lovely Sister Nene will take you to our fellowship hall. We have a little reception there for you. Brother Bo, would you go with me as we go back? Uh, so go ahead and gather your things up, and they'll take you to the back. It's got a little reception uh, for you. Rev, you got me on the video back there? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and go to the, go ahead and go to the back, guys. You know, Have a little cookies and punch. And then afterwards, guys, after the reception, if you guys, we still have some cookies back there. If you guys like to go back and enjoy some cookies. You, uh, you know. Now, parents, if you don't want your babies to have no cookies, you tell them no. Because I'm going to tell them, yeah, baby, eat all these cookies. And then I'm going to send them back home with you. Sugared up. Oh, bless his name. With that being said, let's stand so that we can be dismissed. Right, right, right. With that being said, uh, I, I need you guys to be hearing this part too. One of the things that we're going to be involved in too, I call it uh, uh, contraband for Congo. If you have some used, slightly used shoes, uh, Sister Nisi, her dad is a pastor in the Congo, and we're going to be sending shoes over to our brothers and sisters in the Congo. I'm going to get stuff set up for that. But if you got some slightly used shoes, don't give me no shoes with the holes at the bottom. <laughs> okay. Bring me some slightly used shoes. If them kids and grew out them shoes, I need them. Okay? Pray with me. Turn to God our Father. We thank you. We love you. We bless you. Thank you that we are the salt and the light because you have made it and you've said it emphatically to us. Oh God, you said it emphatically to us because we believe the lie emphatically. And so God, we are who you say you are. We are children of the Most High God. <clears throat> We're no longer slaves. We're children. And we thank you. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you with every spiritual blessing. May the Lord keep you. May he keep your head standing with mighty arms and protection. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May you feel the warm Shekinah glory of an awesome God in your face. May the Lord be gracious to you. May you know that the great God of heaven is pleased with you. Yes, Lord. Yeah. May the Lord lift his countenance up to you. Oh, may he lift you up like a father lifts up a beautiful baby boy. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lord. And may the great God of heaven give you peace. The world didn't give it, and the world cannot take it away. Peace. Thank you, Lord. Shalom, safety, healing, deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Go win.